the history of the I'm Andrea Bill Klein Bill. Thomas, and welcome to a conversation on bail reform. It's one of the most polarizing topics in Albany. It even has Governor Hochul negotiating a compromise to implement changes to the law. Let's take a look at how all of this started. As violent crime continues to rise in the city, law enforcement to lawmakers are taking aim at bail reform. Mayor Adams is among the staunchest critics. 2019 to 21, number arrested for homicide out on bail for gun offenses tripled, tripled. We're talking homicides. We lost lives. Historically, bail was established only as an incentive for defendants to return to court. Maria Jai is an attorney with the Legal Aid Society. Bail is not meant to be punishment. It is not a system of punishment. And under our constitution, if you are arrested, you are innocent until proven guilty. But bail resulted in the mass incarceration, mainly of people of color. In 2019, while black New Yorkers made up 24 percent of the city's general population, they were 50 percent of people charged in criminal court and 56 percent sent to jail pre-trial. <laughs> yeah, but there's a reason for that. <laughs> that's, that's not that bad, actually. I thought it'd be worse. Right, because you got some bad hombres up there too, man. Yeah, Who that's true. Those? Yeah, but yeah, like it's it, it, it's like they acted like they acted like they don't know that. They, like, look, man, that yes, that's because they do shit. Six percent sent to jail pre-trial. Bronx cool. District Attorney Darcel Clark remembers her early years as a prosecutor in the 80s. The answer was law enforcement, just sweep up everybody, the whole community, everybody. And I was a prosecutor then. And our job was they brought them in, it was nail them and jail them. That's how we thought we kept the community safe. We and yeah, it worked. It was working. Nail them and jail them. I like No, that ain't the point, uh, that ain't the point. <laughs> yeah. Nail him and jail him. Murr Monsters, Murr Monsters from up there, man. He says, these smoke shops be getting robbed a lot all around the NYC. And it's always Yemenis owning them, shaking my head, annoying. Breeding grounds for sun trouble. Yeah, if you have one of those smoke shops on your block, yeah, you're going to have a lot of sun teams hanging around. Um, it's, it, it's like having a methadone clinic. <laughs> Your block is like it just attracts bad elements, bad actors. We know now better than that. In 2015, Khalif Browder became the face of the impact of that approach. Browder took his own life following his release from Rikers Island after spending years behind bars, unable to post bail on low level charges that never went to trial. In fact, most defendants are unable to post bail, resulting in jail time incarceration of a couple of days, which most people, you know, assume is no big deal, can really be catastrophic to housing insecurity, food insecurity, job insecurity. The jail population sharply declined from nearly 22,000 in 1991 to just over 7,000 in 2019. Yikes. Yikes. So all those people are on the streets. Because it should be more. It should have went up. It should be like around like 30,000 now in jail in New York. And now it's 7,000. Yeah, I'm That's shocked, cool. man. What, New York City's 4 million people? No. And New they York only City got like 7,000 incarcerated? New York City's like 19 million during the daytime. Oh, my God. And it's like, um, I think like 10 million or 9 million residents, but people from Connecticut, New Jersey, even Pennsylvania work in um, New York and travel commute because it's, it's cost of living. And they only got 7,000 people incarcerated. That's insane. Well, yeah. that's because they're not arresting everybody right yeah. the same way they were. Exactly. It's, it's just, it's insane.
2018, when crime reached record lows, despite fewer people being behind bars. A vast majority were being held pre-trial on a variety of offenses. The bail reform law, first implemented in January of 2020, then rolled back under intense pressure that July, sought to address the disparities by eliminating cash bail for nearly all misdemeanors and nonviolent felonies, meaning those without money could remain free while awaiting trial. When bail is set, judges also have to consider a defendant's means, not create a financial hardship, and provide easier options to pay. They have a better chance of seeing their case through without having to take a coercive plea, a better opportunity to not face any jail or prison time at all, and a better opportunity to not face a conviction at all. As bail reform was being implemented, the COVID pandemic was also raging. Arrests plummeted. Courts became backed up as virtual proceedings went into effect. And by the summer of 2020, gun violence was also on the rise. Judges began sending bail more often than they had that discretion on cases where they had been releasing people. Researcher Michael Rempel studies the impact of the law. The evidence to date doesn't suggest that it was bail reform that led to the uptick in gun violence. While not being able to detain people on certain charges, in select cases, judges can use electronic monitoring, require treatment and other programs while defendants await trial as part of an expanded supervised release. People are released on supervised release. That's a joke. The city hasn't well financed that. According to city data of the tens of thousands of people awaiting trial from January 2020 to June of 2021, 5% or less were rearrested in any given month, mostly on misdemeanors. That translates to about 2,000 people each month. Are they reoffending in a different um, percentage than before the bail reform laws were put in place? Yeah, there's no indication of that whatsoever. New York is the only well, the indication, dickhead, is the fucking crime. Like they're looking at paper. They don't look at they don't look with their eyes. They just look at the numbers and shit. Numbers don't always tell the story. Um salute to um TCT. My man, he says, Good evening, great people of Op Nation for the porch fund. Yeah, salute to TCT, man. Um, thank you for your service, man. Please. Yeah, there's no indication of that whatsoever. New York is the only state that does not allow judges to consider public safety when setting bail or pretrial detention, a major factor critics of the law want to change. There's a small percentage that is causing the violence and the harm in our community. They're taking advantage of the bail reform that was put in place to provide that equity for everybody. That equity. Everybody, look at God damn <laughs> Michael Strahan getting shit done. Right, man. Like shit, man. I that equity for everybody. The statistics mean nothing to the victims in traumatized communities. The Bronx District Attorney's Office investigated 600 shootings last year alone, but Clark does not blame bail reform laws. I can't prosecute my way out of here, but we can do a lot of prevention to keep people from coming in the first place. We have. Yes, you can prosecute yourself out of this situation. You most certainly can, you idiot, you fucking moron. But we can do it. She, she's a fucking moron. Hit one if you. I mean, like, she's a fucking moron, right? She's the DA for the Bronx. She just wanted the benefits, not the actual work. Fucking um, Charlemagne says the, 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 the craziest people in the world are in Florida and the Bronx. And this is the DA for the Bronx. A lot of prevention to keep people from coming in the first place. We have to look at the root causes of crime and it's not necessarily a law it's what's happening in our community we have people that live at the poverty level or below they don't have jobs the schools are not preparing our kids the way they should people are homeless providing more resources clark says should be a larger focus of the strategy not an excuse it's about time that we get the resources that we need in the bronx all while keeping jail and state prison for the most violent on the table. Calling 911 in an emergency. Gives me free stuff. So I wanted to segue into this because 
it's very interesting. Civil rights. Now listen to this. Listen to this. That that was that that's how we got here, right? Now you're not gonna believe this, guys. Peep this. This is today. No, this is yesterday. Civil rights leaders held a fiery rally to pressure Governor Hochul and other state lawmakers to give judges more discretion to put the bad guys behind bars. CB <laughs> okay. I'm, lo I'm lost. So we're, we're, we want to put them behind bars now? Now the civil rights leaders want them behind bars. Civil right. rights leaders held a fiery rally to pressure Governor Hochul and other state lawmakers to give judges more discretion to put the bad guys behind bars. CBS 2's political reporter Marsha Kramer has this one. Cell doors will close on more repeat offenders if Albany lawmakers approve a new change to the bail laws. But if they don't, an influential group of civil rights leaders say it could cost top leaders their jobs. Make no mistake about it, Andrea Stewart Cousins. Say it again. We sent you to Albany. Call Hasty. Make no mistake about it. We sent you to Albany. Yes, yes. And just like we sent you to Albany, we can send you away from Albany. Yeah. Luminaries of the civil rights movement include Albany is the capital of New York. That's where the state legislature. All right, Ock, I'm a politician in a very sunny district. What do I got to do to get the black vote? I don't know. I'm confused, man. I have no idea. <laughs> You're my political advisor. What do I need to say at the podium to get the black vote? Lie to them. Yeah, give gives them some free stuff. <laughs> free stuff, but also lock them up more? No, don't lock them up more. Don't lock them up. So not not right them, don't listen to this group. <laughs> listen to the other group. Not, don't yeah. lock them up right away. No, no. Here, here's the thing. Whatever, I need like a ten. I need a ten point plan. That's what I need. No, whatever <laughs> white liberals are on. See, this is the thing. White liberals in New York are getting bust upside their head, and knockout game is back. The knockout game went went away for a while. The knockout game went away for like five years. The knockout game is back. So pasty libs are like, yo, enough of this, enough of this shit. And their white, I mean their um son minions are now parroting whatever they said, just like they parroted before when they said defund the belief. Yes, yes. And yes. just like we sent you to all we can send you away from all yeah. luminaries of the civil rights movement including naacp president hazel dukes eric garner's mother gwen carr eric garner's mother is now demanding that the new york state legislator and politicians get tough on crime eric garner's mom what the fuck man this is a complete like 180 man this is like when the uh naacp in oakland was demanding to put the police chief back in yeah what the fuck is happening eric garner's mama is like yo fuck this shit you said words have gone too far think about it they've gone so far that eric garner's mother <laughs> And and listen, you know what she was? She was a big activist. She, I'll show you some stuff on her. She was completely against the police for years. Of course, we know why. But she was, oh, my God. The fact that she's doing this shit, this is insane. When I, when I peeped this, when I peeped this, I was like, oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. Sent you to all we can send you away from all yeah. luminaries of the civil rights movement, including NAACP President Hazel Dukes, Eric Garner's mother Gwen Carr, and Bishop Raymond Rivera of the Latino Pastoral Action Center gathered in Harlem to demand bail reform, a change that would end the requirement that judges set the least restrictive bail for repeat offenders and others who've terrorized communities. Call Hazel. The bill had in it that the jail that the that the Judges had to 
set the least restrictive bail for repeat offenders. <laughs> Think about shocking, it. shockingly, that didn't work. <laughs> no one lost their job over that suggestion. <laughs> I mean, these, these people are. It's it's just it's literally a clown show, man. It's like it's like an episode of South Park, man. You must. Set the least restrictive bail for me. I don't think they could write this, Ock, in the South Park writers' rooms. They <laughs> yeah, couldn't come up with this. Yeah, truth is stranger than fiction. That's true. That is that is so true. Truth is so much stranger than fiction. I mean, like Ben Crump's gonna run for a Republican president next. <laughs> this is insane. You got fucking Eric Garner's mama demanding. I mean, she's not asking. She's demanding that they get tough on crap and start locking these some words up. And bail reform, a change that would end the requirement that judges set the least restrictive bail for repeat offenders and others who have terrorized communities. Paul Hasty signed the bill. Andrew Cousin Stewart signed the bill. It's not about we don't like you. We like our kids alive. The group concentrated their firepower on the top bananas in Albany. Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty and Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart. Uh oh, she called the top bananas. She in trouble. She is in trouble. <laughs> she done fucked up now. She done lost her job and don't even know it. The group concentrated their firepower on the top bananas in Albany. Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty and Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, who hold the cards about whether the governor's bail reform plan is part of the new budget. You comfortable with these people holding the cards to your safety, fisherman? I've never felt safer in America in my entire life. These the people that hold the cards, man. I think my IQ is probably higher than their both of theirs combined. Oh my God, man. These are the people who hold the cards. Jesus Christ, man. Yo, just got to tag us in, in, you know? You just got to you gotta be like that black lady in South Africa. Just tag us in. We'll come back. We'll set it right. Y'all can have your big gulps and your parties and all that. We'll make sure the lights stay on. Yeah. Thank you, man. Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty and Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, who hold the cards about whether the governor's bail reform plan is part of the new budget, which is due by the end of the week. Although lawmakers have been reluctant, there is widespread support for change. 72% of New Yorkers support bail reform. 72%. That's a mandate. According to a Siena research poll. Reverend Green mints no words in pointing out how the failure to act would make lawmakers vulnerable. If we don't get this issue of public safety right now, mm -hmm. so many who are on the far right will use it to attack us. Sources tell CBS2 that there has been yeah, some man, movement can... in the legislature <laughs> and there. The fuck is he talking about? Right. He's trying to fucking he's trying to like um, anything. He's desperate. What what this, neighborhood is this in? This is um, City Hall. So this is just for the whole. So he's a, he's afraid of New York City flipping red. <laughs> to attack us. Sources tell CBS too that there has been some movement in the legislature, and there may be an opening for a compromise. But since this is Albany, there's no done deal until there is a deal. In Harlem, I'm Marcia Kramer. Yeah, Harlem. Wow. Uh, speaking of New York, that reminded me, uh, the Yankees uh, just got a new shortstop, a pretty good player. But however, some people are demanding that he be sent back down to the minors and apologize for following Donald Trump on Instagram. They're pissed off because he follows Trump on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, it's just insane, man. Um uh it's just it's just insane let's see what let's see eric eric garner's mom man 
what she used to be talking this, about. This verdict. Um, he released a statement I wanted to read, and, and the first part of it said, my family and I include him talking about your son and his family in our prayers, and I hope they will accept my personal condolences for their loss. I know you've had time to think about that apology. Do you accept that apology? Is that something you even want to hear from him? I would not accept that apology on the strength of he gave no consideration to my son when he was choking him and my son was begging for his life. That was a time for an apology. He should have got up off of him and let him breathe. That's the apology that I would have wanted. Then I would have still had my son. He might have been incapacitated, but maybe I would have still had him. And Officer Panaleo talked about that moment, uh, apparently to the grand jury. He said um, that he tried to get off your son, he, his words, quote, as quick as he could. When you hear that, what do you hear her just say, like she's just instigating. <laughs> she, she leads. These are such leading questions. What kind of journalism is this? If this is a journalist. Communist journalism. Bolshevik revolutionary tactics. Salute to Muramasa, man. Nation Hall of Fame. He says, 100% bail reform is terrible. A lot of small businesses and Dwayne Reed's all over losing money for theft like crazy. The criminals know they get no bed, no jail time, which is crazy. Carl Hasty is a joke. Yeah. Carl Hasty is a son, man. man. What do you think? You know, hearing that, you know, I wonder if that man should have ever been an officer at all. He has no regards for human life if this is the way he treats suspects. <laughs> yeah. Um, Never mind the Sun Teens chimping out with Glocks with switches just randomly blasting. Never mind that. Yeah, it's just, it's just, um, yeah, she was, she was, she was not with the whole, um, Demonstrators police. are gathering today for the latest pop-up protest against police brutality. The mother of Eric Garner and brother of George Floyd are among those taking part in a march through the streets of New York City. Joining me now, Gwen Carr, the mother of Eric Garner, who was killed in 2014 after an NYPD officer used an illegal chokehold during an arrest. Gwen, thank you so much for being with us. And we have seen weeks of protests and gatherings in the name of justice, in the name of your son, in the name of George Floyd, and unfortunately so many many others. Tell us about the march today. Uh, yes, today um, we are going to continue to protest. Uh, there has been many a protest around the city. Today we'll be uh, meeting at 42nd Street, marching up to Trump Towers. And um, I know a lot of times the people are saying uh, enough already with the protests, but we have to continue to protest. We have to continue until we get uh, true accountability. Now, this woman today is talking about <laughs> demanding. That Young kids is crazy. <laughs> She's demanding police to start stepping up and politicians and come get these sun words. Salute to Gilbert, man. Um, this is... I mean, this is a complete, this isn't a 180. This is like a fucking, no, 360 will put you right back where you were. Yeah, this is a 180, yeah. Uh, true transparency. Oh, but if she lives long enough, the 360 will come. Because if the police get back and get, get back to being tough and open broken windows policing and fucking goddamn stop and frisk and they get this shit under control, these same people are going to be bitching again the other way. Man, y'all being too tough on the side of me, man. I see. And true legislation. Because even though legislation has been passed, there's so much pushback, even with the 50A and the Eric Garner uh, uh, Anti-Chokehold anti Act. So we must push forward to let them know that we are not stepping back. 
You're not stepping back and you'll be joined today. Um, and, and that, what how they do on Maury, and the, oh, that, 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 that was revealed to be a lie. You, yeah, uh, the, the, the step back has been <laughs> stepped. You stepped back, man. You stepped all the way back. Um, you stepped 